Hello, everyone, and welcome to the How to Get Involved in Cybersecurity Awareness Month webinar. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Over the next hour, we'll take an in-depth dive into the Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020 campaign for this October. We'll provide an overview of this year's theme, share tips and advice for using the toolkit, and for launching your own initiatives. So before we get started, please note that this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on staysafeonline.org within the next few days, and the slides will be available to download. Uh, if you have any questions, please submit them to the chat box. We will try to answer as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. If we can't get to it, uh, we'll provide our contact information at the end of the webinar, so you can always email us with any questions. Okay, now let's get started. Uh, my name is Jennifer Cook. I'm the Director of Programs and Special Events at the National Cybersecurity Alliance, or NCSA. I'm joined by my colleague, Daniel Elliott, Director of Education and Strategic Initiatives at NCSA, as well as Benjamin Scribner, Section Chief of the Stakeholder Engagement Division at the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA. NCSA and CISA have been longtime partners on Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and we're excited to come together today to present this year's campaign. So for those unfamiliar with the National Cybersecurity Security Alliance, we are the nation's leading nonprofit public-private partnership promoting cybersecurity and privacy education and awareness. We create and implement broad-reaching education and awareness efforts with our partners to empower users at home, work, and school with the information they need to keep themselves, their organizations, and their sensitive information safe and secure online, and to encourage a culture of cybersecurity. Uh, in addition to Cybersecurity Awareness Month, our core efforts include Data Privacy Day every January 28th, which is an international effort to empower individuals and businesses to respect privacy, safeguard data, and enable trust. We also have Cybersecure My Business, a national program helping small and medium-sized businesses learn to be safer and more secure online. The program consists of a series of workshops and webinars based on the NIST cybersecurity framework on identifying valuable business assets others want, learning how to protect those assets, detecting when something has gone wrong, responding quickly and implementing an action plan, and learning what resources are needed to recover after a breach. We also co-lead Stop and Connect with the uh, US Department of Homeland Security. It is the global online safety education and awareness campaign to help all digital citizens stay safer and more secure online. The program offers a library of resources, all available for free to download and share. And now I'll turn it over to Benjamin Scribner to tell us about CISA. Ben? Great. If you want to move on to slide five, um, Janet, I appreciate that and the introduction. Um, so I'm very excited about talking with all of you about uh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month as we gear up for this year's Awareness Month activities. Um, we have a lot of exciting stuff in store for you, and so we're, we're looking forward to that. Um, as Jen said, I am a section chief at the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, or CISA, and I'd like to just take a few minutes to explain what we do. Uh, CISA is the nation's risk advisor. We are at the heart of mobilizing collective defense as we lead the nation's efforts to understand and manage risks to our critical infrastructure. We work with partners to defend against today's threats and collaborate with them to build a more secure and resilient infrastructure for the future. Threats to our nation are more complex and there are uh, there is a more diverse set of threat actors than at any other point in our history. The, the threats that CISA monitors include digital, physical, man-made, technological, and natural. Part of our work includes building our national capacity to defend against cyber attacks. We work with the federal government to provide cybersecurity tools, incident response services, and assessment capabilities to safeguard the .gov networks. We also coordinate cybersecurity resilience efforts using trusted partnerships across the private sector and public sectors. And we deliver technical assistance and assessments to infrastructure owners and operators nationwide. 
working with stakeholders across the country, CISA conducts extensive nationwide outreach to support and promote the ability of emergency response providers and relevant government officials to continue to communicate in the event of a natural disaster, acts of terrorism, or other man-made disaster. And of course, we lead National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. These efforts increase awareness of cybersecurity threats to the US national government and infrastructure. We do this in partnership with NCSA, which helps us to extend that message to the private sector and industry, including many entities who operate globally. So that's a brief overview of what CISA does, and Jen, back to you. Thanks, Ben. So let's dive into Cybersecurity Awareness Month. The campaign was launched in 2004, and it's a collaborative effort between government and industry to ensure every American has the resources they need to stay safer online and to create a safer, more secure, and cyber resilient cyber world. Uh, observed every October, the month includes participation from industry, engaging their customers and employees, as well as government, academia, nonprofits, and the general public. Since its original inception under leadership from the Department of Homeland Security and NCSA, the campaign has grown exponentially, reaching consumers, small and medium-sized businesses, corporations, educational institutions, and young people across the nation. And now in its 17th year, Awareness Month continues to build on that momentum and impact co-led by NCSA and CISA. Uh, last year's theme, uh, some of you might remember, was Own It, Secure, Protect It, uh, which emphasized the role each individual plays and stressed the importance of taking proactive steps to enhance cybersecurity at home and in the workplace. There was tremendous, tremendous engagement with our materials and sharing of key resources. Uh, and messages, um, what, whether it was linking to resources, showcasing the, the themes, or the promotion of our partners' programs, the organic growth gained great momentum. And this year, NCSA and CISA are excited to present a new logo for Cybersecurity, Cybersecurity Awareness Month. This logo was designed with the intention of creating a Cybersecurity Awareness Month branding that could be used year over year and can be easily incorporated into the marketing and branding of any company and organization. So once October 2020 is over, you can go right ahead and start incorporating this logo into your 2021 activities. Uh, this logo and its iterations can be downloaded on NCSA's website at the link at the bottom of the screen. You do not need NCSA's permission to use this logo, but please uh, check out our branding guidelines to help you incorporate this logo into the, uh, your materials. The branding guidelines can also be found at the link at the bottom of the slide. Uh, we also have messaging guidelines available as well that provides helpful tips on writing about cybersecurity awareness. If you're a security professional, we find this is a helpful guide to share with your marketing or communications teams to help them understand how to talk about cybersecurity awareness month and any programs and activities you might be developing. This year, we are also very excited to present our new theme for Cybersecurity Awareness Month, which is Do Your Part, Be Cyber Smart. The goal of this theme is to empower individuals and organizations to own their role in protecting their part of the cyberspace. Uh, everyone needs to take proactive steps to enable lasting positive cybersecurity behavior change at home and at work. Protecting against cyber threats is a critical challenge for organizations of all sizes in both the public and private sectors and serves as a constant reminder for the need to promote cybersecurity awareness. We want to highlight the importance of empowering citizens, businesses, governments, and schools to improve their cybersecurity preparedness. It reminds us that being more secure online is a shared responsibility and creating a safe, safer cyber environment requires engagement from the entire community. Under this theme, NCSA and CISA are focusing on the Internet of Things in particular and will be emphasizing the message, if you connect it, protect it. On this slide are a few figures to support the need to focus on the Internet of Things and the importance of protecting all your personal connected devices. Uh, the number of connected devices is growing rapidly. There will be more than 41 billion IoT devices by 2027 up from about 8 billion by 29, uh, in 2019. 75% of infected devices uh, in IoT attacks are routers, which is a connected device that can often be overlooked by consumers. 
And once plugged into the internet, connected devices have been found to be attacked within five minutes and targeted by specific exploits within 24 hours. We want to use If You Connect It, Protect It to remind all businesses and consumers that cybersecurity doesn't stop at your laptop or smartphone. It's about considering every device that you connect to the internet, how these de devices connect to each other, and taking steps to protect each and every one. Throughout October, we will focus on the following areas in our content. Uh, we hope you and your organization will follow along with us, but we also encourage you to uh, create your own areas of focus that are relevant to your organization. Week one is all about if you connect to protect it. And since the line between our online and offline lives is indistinguishable, and the network of connected devices creates a lot of opportunities and challenges for individuals and organizations around the world. Uh, this, in this week, we will highlight the ways in which internet connected devices have impacted our lives and will empower all users to own their role in security by taking steps to reduce, reduce their risks. Uh, in week two, we will talk about securing devices at home and at work. 2020 saw a major disruption in the way many work, learn, and socialize online. With more people now working from home, the two internet-connected uh, environments of our home and businesses are colliding on a scale we've never seen before, introducing a whole new set of potential vulnerabilities that users must, must be conscious of. A week two will focus on steps users and organizations can take to protect internet-connected devices for both personal and professional use. In week three, we're talking about securing internet-connected devices in healthcare. The healthcare industry is increasingly relying upon connected uh, devices and solutions to improve patient care, organizational efficiency, speed of crisis response, and much more. The emergence of telemedicine, digital health records, uh, internet-connected medical devices, patient wellness apps, and an increasing amount of third parties entering the health supply chain has created many benefits but has also exposed the industry to vulnerabilities that cyber criminals regularly attempt to exploit. We'll delve, in, delve into the industry and uh, consumer implications of internet connected device use and what both can take to secure these devices and connections. The final week of Cybersecurity Awareness Month will look at the future of connected devices. This week, we'll look at how uh, technological innovations such as 5G might impact consumers and businesses' online experiences, for example, faster speeds and data transmission, um, a larger attack surface for hackers, as well as how people and infrastructure can adapt to the continuous evolution of the connected devices moving forward. And now I'll turn it back over to Ben to talk about CISA's uh, additional focus areas. Great, thank you very much, Jen. So moving on to the next slide, um, CISA is the lead federal agency responsible for national election security. So protect 2020, hashtag protect 2020, is a national call to action initiated by CISA. Our aim is to enhance the integrity and resilience of the nation's election infrastructure and ensure the confidentiality, truthfulness, and accuracy of the free and fair elections necessary for our American way of life. While elections are managed at the state and local level, CISA remains committed to working with election officials to help secure the nation's election infrastructure. This includes sharing network defense information and, de and best practices that protect the nation's election infrastructure and processes, analyzing and providing feedback on information reported by election organizations, standing up an election day situational awareness room, offering assessment and incident response support, and working with election organizers organizations to reprioritize risk and provide guidance to help address an increase in uh, an increase in vote by mail. Last week, CISA announced the publication of the Cyber Incident Detection and Notification Planning Guide for Election Security. The planning guide and templates are voluntary tools to help jurisdictions effectively recognize and respond to potential cyber incidents. Election offices, and use this information 
as a basic cyber incident response plan, or they can integrate the information into a broader plan. The templates can be tailored to fit the exact needs of each jurisdiction. For more information, you can visit cisa.gov slash protect 2020. Jen, back to you. Great, thanks, Ben. So I also want to share a few calls to action that we will be promoting throughout the month and suggested messages that you can use within your own organizations and communities. Uh, we find it's easier to talk to people about good cyber hygiene when you promote proactive behavior and give them specific, easy to understand actions they can take to greatly improve their cyber habits. Uh, some of the suggested calls to action include lock down your login, all about creating long and unique passphrases for all accounts and using multi-factor authentication wherever possible. Uh, when in doubt, throw it out, being wary of clicking on links and emails or downloading anything that comes from stranger or that you're not expecting and using the junk or block options to no longer receive messages from a particular sender. Keep a clean machine, all about keeping all software and internet connected devices current to reduce risk of infection from ransomware and malware and configuring devices to automatically update or to notify you when an update is available. Uh, keep tabs on your apps, all about best practices for using device applications and remembering to read and review what you give your apps access to and making sure to keep them updated or deleting them if you no longer use them. Own your online presence, uh, a reminder every time you sign up for a new account, download a new app or get a new device to immediately configure the privacy and security settings to your comfort level for information sharing. Uh, share with care. Think about uh, think before posting about yourself and others online and considering what a post reveals about you, who might see it, and how it might affect you or others. And uh, get savvy about Wi-Fi hotspots is uh, a reminder uh, to limit what you do on public Wi-Fi and to consider using a VPN or a personal or mobile hotspot for a more secure connection. Now I'd like to jump in one of of the uh, first ways you can get involved in Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Um, if you've participated in, in the month before, you're probably already familiar with our Champions Program. Uh, but if this is your first time, I'll give some background. Uh, the Champions Program is a way to officially show your support for cybersecurity awareness and education during October and align your organization with the month. Uh, champions include individuals and organizations dedicated to promoting a safer, more secure, and more trusted internet. It's completely free and very easy to sign up. All champions receive a toolkit of materials uh, to guide and assist you in planning and executing a campaign. And there are special materials exclusively for registered champions, which I'll review in a moment. Organizations that register will also have their company name listed on NCSA's website at staysafeonline.org. And champions are among the first to receive updates on Cybersecurity Awareness Month news, events, and materials as well. So the link to become a champion is at the bottom of the slide. Um, on the slide is also the page you'll see when you go to register. Uh, as you can see, there are two separate forms, one for organizations and one for individuals. Uh, if you're registering your organization, you can also register yourself as an individual champion. Uh, please note, once you complete the form and click submit, you'll be immediately sent to our homepage. Uh, but registration will go through and you'll receive your welcome email and toolkit within one to three business days. Uh, if you have any questions about your registration or materials, you can email us at info at staysafeonline.org. I'll provide that email again at the end of the presentation. So looking a bit closer at the toolkit, uh, this year's toolkit includes a PDF guide to Cybersecurity Awareness Month 2020 including a week-by-week -week breakdown of content, story ideas, and facts and figures, as well as lots of great ideas for imp implementing your own activities and events, in addition to the ones we'll be reviewing on this webinar in a moment. Champions also receive a template press release to announce your support and celebration of the month, a PowerPoint presentation similar to this one, which you can use at your events or trainings, um, also, an email copy to send uh, internally to employees or externally to customers or clients. And we also include social media graphics for Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and over 50 sample posts that you can use on your uh, social media platforms. 
And now I'm going to turn it over to Daniel Elliott to review some great activities and ways to get involved in the campaign. Daniel? Thanks so much, Jen. I really appreciate it. And it's a pleasure being on here with all of you who have logged in. Um, so this year, more than ever, the online activity is going to be critical for communicating uh, the core messages of Cybersecurity Awareness Month as more people are spending time online. And so we wanted to be sure that we uh, encourage individuals and organizations to use the hashtag BeCybersmart and follow both the National Cybersecurity Alliance at Stay Safe Online and CISA at, at Cyber and at CISAGov and also at CISA Krebs um, to be sure that you are um, not only getting some of the most recent information all throughout the month, we'll be pushing out information, videos, tip sheets, um, infographics that you can use, but also that you can join in the conversation uh, across platforms. Um, and you can use either some of the infographics and the sample tweets and um, Facebook posts and LinkedIn posts that we provide you, or you can create your own in order to target your own audiences. We know that there are many different forms and fashions of organizations who are on this call and who participate in October. And so we want to be sure that you have the ability to customize um, the content in any way that meets the needs of your organization and uh, your audiences. And so Jen, we'll, we can go to the next slide. So there are a few ways you can get involved. And again, these are just um, to start the conversation and lay some bricks, but it's really, uh, you can go in any direction. So some ways you can get involved is write a blog post about one of the weekly themes. So we have outlined the weekly themes for you. Um, again, they're general enough where you can take them in almost any direction to meet the needs of your audiences. Um, we at the National Cybersecurity Alliance um, accept guest blog posts, but if you want to post a blog on your own site and share it out, we encourage that. Uh, we encourage you to distribute an email to your employees or customers um, to spread awareness, show your commitment to both um, data privacy, to cybersecurity, protecting their information, um, but also to educate them on basic steps that they can take to protect their information. Um, distributing a press release to the media if you have a particular topic or an event that you want to educate uh, your communities on, uh, we encourage you to draft a press release. And we have issued uh, in the toolkit a sample press release that you can use. Um, and you can take that and, again, chot, slice and dice it however you want, but it's a, it's a starting point for you. Um, so you don't have to recreate everything. Um, also, issuing a company promotion. We've seen throughout the years, this is our 17th year co-leading Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and um, a lot of organizations uh, promote some of their um, goods and services throughout the month, maybe opening it up, them up to uh, free trials throughout October uh, in the remainder of the year. And so if that's something you hadn't considered in prior uh, years, this is something that you might want to consider for this year, just to, again, get more attention, uh, spread your brand awareness, and to spread um, good information and good products. And next slide, Jen, we will um, talk a little bit more about how to get involved as far as in your community, right? So holding a family tech talk. Um, even if you don't hold a large scale virtual event, have a conversation with your family, your kids, your spouse or significant other, your grandparents, whoever it is. Um, help them understand some basic steps they can take to improve their security, particularly as we do our home, our schooling from home now. Uh, we do our uh, even more of our working and working for our nonprofits that we're on boards of, et cetera. So how do you help them understand at home how they can secure um, their sensitive uh, information. We can also uh, encourage you to integrate Cybersecurity Awareness Month branding on your organization's internal or external communications or website. So take that logo that uh, we've created and put that on your website or on your social media accounts um, and demonstrate your support of Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And the, we've kind of gone through a a working group of large and small brands to see if this logo would be appealing to uh, large and small organizations. And we had a really great response as far as 
um, the colors, the look of the, the logo, uh, it blends with a lot of different themes and branding. And so we encourage you to integrate that into any of your campaigns. And another piece of going online and spreading the messages, you know, we encourage you to host a Twitter chat or a poll, polling your audience on different platforms to get information, uh, their, their beliefs about social media practices or um, how they use uh, different technologies um, to host a Twitter chat on the different themes. Uh, the National Cybersecurity Alliance, we're planning to host a Twitter chat the first week of October. But beyond that, if you would like to host Twitter chats, um, or if you'd like to host it the first week of October, it's perfectly fine. Um, we just want to encourage an organizations and individuals to get involved in any form or fashion uh, to spread awareness as, mu as much as you can. And on the next slide, um, so when you're hosting an event or training, we know that probably 99.9% .9 of the events this year will be um, virtual. And so just a few basics when it comes to hosting any type of event, whether it's virtual or in person. Uh, per first off is, you know, identifying your key audience is always one of the best places to start um, because what you, it's difficult to create a one-size-fits-all awareness program for your organization. What we at National Cybersecurity Alliance try to do is create broad enough information so that you as evangelists can take this information and then customize it for your core audiences uh, and communities. And so once you identify your audience for your event, we hope that you would identify some of the behaviors you want to change or influence, particularly if you're designing an event that is targeted to colleagues um, or specific customers. We also encourage you to keep it lighthearted. The scare tactics typically don't work. We want to, um, it, we're in a, a battle of getting people's attention. And so the more you can keep your information lighthearted and entertaining, um, you might be able to grab the attention of some of your communities and audiences. For organizations specifically, uh, it's always great to show buy-in for Cybersecurity Awareness Month or for your cybersecurity awareness campaigns throughout the year as a whole, uh, show buy-in from your C-suite, uh, your corporate level um, stakeholders, and to identify uh, evangelists from throughout your organization who can help uh, generate some buy-in across the organization. We also, and this ties back to uh, keep it lighthearted, but keep the learning experience uh, fun and relatable and interactive. You know, not everything has to be fun or funny, but um, keeping it relatable and interactive is really important if you want to engage your audiences um, in different ways. And so we encourage you to think about that as you develop your strategy for October. Um, recognizing and re rewarding engagement, again, it's just how do you think about ways to get people actively involved via uh, versus passive recipients of often too technical of information. And then we also encourage you to invite an outside speaker, whether it is through the National Cybersecurity Alliance or CISA, which we'll talk about here in just a moment, or whether it's through someone else through your community, um, or you know there are regional cyber advisors, there are FBI agents across the country uh, who specialize in cybersecurity. Um, there's so many regional federal trade commission experts. And so there are so many individuals, both in your community and nationally that you can reach out to um, and local, local business experts in your community. Um, think about different ways that you can engage your audience um, and maybe have them hear from someone they haven't heard from before. And so on the next slide, Jen, um, so this is where um, we just, uh, you can link, or uh, we link to ways that you can request outside speakers. So uh, for the National Cybersecurity Alliance, if you email info at staysafeonline.org, we would be happy to, if uh, if we're not able to speak at a specific event, we're always happy to um, provide suggestions um, to individuals. And then um, I think, Jen, you wanted Ben to talk about CISA's process. Yes, thank you, Daniel. Uh, ben, can you and provide us with some more details about CISA speaker request process? Absolutely, and, and just building upon uh, the great 
uh, opportunities that NCSA provides. CISA also stands ready to try and help you to uh, identify speakers for events that you're hosting. Um, if you would like to request a CISA speaker to participate in your National Cybersecurity Awareness Month event, you can send a uh, completed speaker request form. Uh, the forms can be found at CISA.DHS. I'm sorry, CISA.gov slash request dash CISA dash speaker. Again, that is CISA.gov slash request dash CISA dash speaker. And you can email the completed form to CISA.speakers at hq.dhs.gov. Now, it's important that you submit your speaker requests by Friday, August 28th, 2020, the date there at the bottom of your screen. To allow CISA enough time to process all the speaker requests and find potential subject matter experts, we ask that you submit by this date and then we will do our best to find you a speaker by the your October event. Okay, Jen, back to you. Thanks, Ben. Uh, so speaking of events, I'd like to share a brief preview of some upcoming Cybersecurity Awareness Month virtual events that uh, you should be on the lookout for for October. Um, we'll be kicking off the month on October 1st with a session on cyber threats and cybersecurity in healthcare today. Experts from industry and government will discuss the emerging threats facing the healthcare industry and consumers and the steps we need to take to protect our nation's healthcare and uh, the public health sector. Uh, this session will be particularly valuable for government employees, but we welcome anyone to attend. On October 6th, uh, NCSA and NASDAQ will host our annual cybersecurity summit on usable security. Experts from various industries and disciplines will come together to discuss innovations and best practices in technology and product design with a human-centric focus, um, best practices for implementing and measuring effective trainings and awareness programs, and we'll highlight uh, uh, current methods cyber threat actors are using to manipulate human behavior. And um, NCSA and partners will come together on October 13th to discuss smart device security for small and medium-sized businesses. We'll address questions uh, such as the security risks from new smart devices you bring into your home and business, uh, what steps can you take to minimize those risks, and what are policy considerations for employees using smart devices. All of these events will be virtual and free to attend. Uh, registration is not yet open for the October 1st or October 6th events, but you can stay tuned by checking our events calendar at staysafeonline.org slash events or by subscribing to NCSA's uh, newsletter. Uh, again, following NCSA and CISA on social media is a great way to stay up to date on new events from both organizations as they're announced. And before we get to the Q&A, we'd like to share a few additional resources to help you in your initiatives. All NCSA's resources for Cybersecurity Awareness Month can be found at the first link on the screen, uh, staysafeonline.org slash cybersecurity dash awareness dash month. We also encourage you to check out our COVID-19 security resource library, which includes dozens of free resources from our partners on topics such as staying cyber secure when you telework and avoiding COVID-19 cyber threats and scams. We also have a series of security awareness videos from our partners at Adobe and Speechless. Uh, these fun videos address several cybersecurity topics such as phishing, removable media, and physical device security. There are five episodes out now, and we will be releasing three more in the series in uh, August, October, and December. So stay tuned for those. Uh, they can also be downloaded and shared uh, with your organization if you go to the link on the screen. And of course, remember to check out NCSA's uh, resources library. The link is at the bottom of the screen where you'll find dozens of tip sheets on uh, various cybersecurity and privacy uh, tips and advice. And Ben, uh, would you like to share some of CISA's resources? Absolutely. So on the next slide, you can see we have a number of addition, additional resources to share with you. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security's the hashtag Be Cyber Smart campaign is a national effort to raise public awareness of how to recognize cyber vulnerabilities and educate the nation on how to protect themselves against cyber assaults and take 
personal responsibilities for online security measures. Then the Stop Think Connect campaign uh, is a national public awareness campaign aimed at increasing the understanding of cyber threats and empowering the American public to be safer and more secure online. Cybersecurity is a shared responsibility, so we have to do our part to keep the internet safe. When we all take simple steps to be safer online, it makes using the internet a more secure experience for everyone. Then, it says that Cyber Essentials is a guide for leaders of small businesses as well as leaders of small and local government agencies to develop an actionable understanding of where to start implementing organizational cyber practice practices. Each month, CISA is releasing a new Cyber Essentials Toolkit. The toolkits break down the six cyber essentials into bite-sized actions for IT and C-suite leadership to work toward full implementation of each cyber essential. CISA provides tips and resources on how to assist organizations and teleworkers to be secure when working remotely, including CISA issued guidance and tips for schools, staff, and students to help secure video teleconferencing, telework best practices, video conferencing tips, and more. All right, so if you'll move to slide 26, so for more resources and information from CISA, for this year's National Cybersecurity Awareness Campaign, visit cisa.gov slash NCSAM. And on the next slide, to stay up to date on CISA's cybersecurity efforts, follow us at, at cisa.gov on Twitter. That's at cisa.gov on Twitter at CISA on Facebook and at CISA.gov on LinkedIn. If you have any questions or would like more information, you can send an email message to us at all one word, stop, think, connect at hq.dhs.gov. Again, that's all one word, stop, think, connect at hq.dhs.gov. Thanks. Great. Over to you, Jen. Thanks so much, Ben. Uh, so the information covered on today's webinar can be found on NCSA's website, uh, staysafeonline.org. Uh, that's also where we'll be posting the recording of this webinar. Um, if you have questions at any time, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by emailing info at staysafeonline.org. And again, one of the best ways to stay up to date on all things Cybersecurity Awareness Month is to follow us on social media. Our Twitter handle is at staysafeonline.org, uh, Facebook also stay safe online, and our LinkedIn uh, page is national-cyber-security-alliance. So with that, uh, we have some time for our Q&A. So uh, if you have not done so already, please submit uh, any questions you have to the Q&A box. Um, and as questions come in, uh, Please uh, take a moment to answer uh, the poll question we just posted. Let's uh, see if any questions have come in. Hi, Jen, this is Daniel. I we had a, quite a few questions on, does it cost anything to get speakers? No, so it does not cost anything. Um, I believe um, NCSA to get speakers. Uh, ben, is that the case with CISA? That, that is also the case with CISA. There is no cost to speakers participating in events. Daniel, were there any other questions? I had a question, should the new logo or branding be used this year or after this year? And we encourage you to start using it now and through this year. <laughs> Yep, that's correct. Um, and Jen, you might want to cover when people might re be able to re access the recording of these slides and the PDF. Uh, so you'll be able to access the recording and the PDF within the next day, and we'll send out an email when it's available.
how can you post a an event on the Stay Safe Online website, Jen? Uh, so to post an event on our website, you can email info at staysafeonline.org. Um, please provide us with um, details of your event, including the title, uh, date, time, and location, and description as well. Do we, have, do we have any other questions? Not that I'm seeing at the moment. We're do you have to become a champion to receive the key kit? Uh, yes, we do ask that you register as a champion to uh, receive the toolkit. Oh, that's an interesting question. Are guest speakers available for the UK? <laughs> I know not for the uh, National Cybersecurity Alliance. I don't know. <laughs> Unless virtual. Oh, we've had a few questions about what sorts of speakers are available, particularly with CISA. Um, and so maybe then you might want to talk about that. Absolutely, yeah. So we have um, lots of people who with lots of technical background who are on the front lines of defending information and systems and networks. And these are people who have insight and, and have, uh, have, have worked uh, defending these networks against uh, some of the, the most um, the, the most aggressive and, and, uh, and most sophisticated uh, threat actors. So we certainly can uh, provide those technical subject matter experts and, and people who, who also can explain more about some of the services and tools and resources that CISA has to, to offer to help organizations try and protect their networks and make themselves more secure, as well as uh, experts on, on just uh, general cybersecurity who can then speak to the challenges that the, the average person faces because the reality is that a lot of the same threats that are that are affecting organizations are really the same threats that are that uh, that uh, affect individuals and many of the same steps need to be taken in order to just make sure that our own systems and our own networks at home and uh, and as we are engaging in our own jobs at work are secured so again, we have lots of people who are who have technical proficiency, but also who have just a lot of experience with dealing with these threats and have seen them from uh, you know from some of the the most um, the, the most uh, prolific and and, and challenging uh, threats to our networks and our security. And Jen, we had a question about how to um, how do they share a blog with us? Uh, so if you're interested in sharing a blog post, you can also uh, send us an email, uh, info at staysafeonline.org. Um, please include uh, the topic that you're interested in, and we'd be happy to chat about it with you further. Are there any other questions? Yeah, we have, we have a few just on kind of speaker. We have a lot of interest in the speakers piece of it. And uh, I think to Ben's point, just to kind of summarize there, there are many different speakers within uh, CISA in particular um, and NCSA's network who have expertise in many different areas. And so if you let us know what you're looking for, what topic uh, you'd like a speaker um, four, we'd be happy to try to match you with the best speaker available. And if CIS, if you request something from CISA and they don't have a particular expertise, which is often hard, hard to find, they have expertise in almost everything, uh, we would be able to um, find you someone who has expertise in that area. That's one of the benefits of being able to 
pulled together so many different um, organizations uh, and partners for this month. Yeah, I would say that, you know, it, it, when you make your request, it's good to just let us know um, if there are particular topics like malware or phishing or uh, something like that that you, you want us to try and focus on. We can certainly bring, in, bring to bear subject matter experts that way. But also let us know who your audience is, because if you are, uh, if, you, if you have a state and local government audience, or if you have uh, a, an, an infrastructure uh, uh, like, like energy, um, or if you have uh, energy production or, or the uh, healthcare industry that is going to be the predominant audience that we're speaking to, we can also actually bring in people who are very familiar with those industries um, and those areas. And we also uh, have a regional ability to bring in speakers who are familiar with regions as well. So really just um, give us as much information as you can about the topics that you want us to address and the audience that we're going to be speaking to. And both those pieces of information will help us to track down somebody who will be able to address what you're looking for. And Ben, I'm trying to find it, but on your, we had a question about um, Spanish versions of materials. On your uh, uh, CISA.gov, do you have resources available in Spanish? So I, I don't have an answer about um, the, the existing resources, but I do know, because um, this is one of the pushes that we're working on, that we are actually working on, on translations of many of our products. So uh, there may be some, but uh, for sure, there are a number that are forthcoming. Great, do we have any other questions? I would just say um, that there, we've kind of answered a bunch of questions in a, in a few of our responses. Um, keep an eye out um, both on sista.gov's website and um, staysafeonline.org. They're, they're gonna continue to be resources come out in addition to the Champions Toolkit. Um, as we get closer to October and throughout October that you can use uh, in your own campaigns. Um, we do not have games in the toolkit. Uh, thank you for asking that. Um, but if you have games that you think are worth promoting, we would love to amplify those. One of the best things is, you know, uh, through our social media channels and communications channels, we're able to amplify a lot of best practices as much as we can throughout the month. So I'm happy to do that. And yes, to confirm again, uh, the speakers, the speaker resources are free. And the collateral that we push out through the Champions Toolkits, are, there's no fee. Okay, if I could just jump in there, this is Benjamin Scribner again with CISA. Uh, we actually do have a trivia game on our website. So oh, if you're looking for a game to, to, uh, to entertain with and to use as your awareness tool, uh, we do have one of those. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Daniel and Ben, for sharing your resources with us today. And thank you, everyone, for taking the time today to join this call. Uh, we look forward to working with you all to promote cyber awareness and to hear what you have going on during cybersecurity. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Thank you.